Hello, family, and thank you for stopping by the house. Yes, I'm calling all of my family. Me- Excuse me, my family members. They need to come on over because we got to talk shop. We got to talk about this candy burris. Yes, we're playing catch up again. We're back. We got to catch up, honey. Because candy burris to me. She seemed like she going to sign some contracts somewhere else. She's sizing up with the devil himself, okay? I'm just saying, if y'all catch her on her speak on it type of platform, look and see how many times she throw up them sixes, okay? That's all I'm going to say. Do your due diligence. Do your homework. I'm talking about conspiracy theories here, okay? And that's where we're going to let it go. I want to see how smart my family members are, okay? How they said, don't let... The person fool you. They do come in like a wolf, but they dress in sheep's clothing. Okay, and I ain't putting any out there either. She has changed a hell of a lot as well. Okay, I'm putting her in the same boat with Candy Burris because she over there hanging with Wendy Williams. And you know how Wendy Williams get down. Now, that's all I'm going to say about that situation because I like an article that the Jasmine brand bought out tonight. Yes, okay. And I'm like, okay, I want to talk about that. Yes, I am going to go back. We're going to do a retraction. Well, yeah, we ain't going to do no retraction, but we're just going to go investigate this situation on Candy Burris a little further and how she is trying to play coy with the simple fact that she loves the fact that nene leaks is coming to be nobody on this show and she like half uh what do you call it shading half trying to put some empathy in there but she is rooting for nene leaks's downfall oh yes she is you remember my candy was over there fighting in some pajama party way back way back when the season was just kind of getting together started and how her and nene was fussing at each other at some little party and she was walking away and nene was playing like an og following her around okay like nah you can't escape honey this ain't the, the singing group escape you gonna listen to what i got to say that's what nene had told her yeah and you remember when her and candy made that we see each other that type of stance mm-hmm. and candy talking about they all good uh, no, I think both of them see each other. Nene used candy a lot as a pawn. You remember when she called herself making up with candy, but she was just trying to drop tea for candy to take back to the intended target, which was more than likely Kenya Moore. <laughs> Okay, and a little bit for Cynthia, just a little sprinkle on, okay? But yes, honey, if you know anything about, you know, uh, the lives of how people get down in them secret societies, and I'm pretty sure Miss Eva is a part of it too. But anyway, we just going to go with these two ladies. Y'all remember them, honey? I know y'all do. They were best buddies. Yes, until uh, Candy turned on Phaedra and started sizing up with Todd and Apollo. And that's where that stuff started getting. And Candy was like, oh, okay, I'm going to go with what Todd say. And everybody liked Apollo. Well, Apollo was kind of not hard to like, okay? But that's when the tables turned. And Nene called herself sizing up with Phaedra. And, of course, um... Candy never forgot that, okay? Y'all be thanking Candy be forgetting stuff and moving on. Uh-uh, she hold grudges. Like Simone over there at Merida Medicine. Mm-hmm. And Mariah. Mm-hmm. And Quad. Yes, Lord. Okay, but I wonder who had their platform first. Somebody get down in them comments, fam. Tell me, who had their platforms first on YouTube? Was it Candy or was it Nene? Because I see Candy just continue to float. Like, she wants to be the head B I C in charge. Yes, she is greedy for that title and she wants to be seen. And she would do anything to stay relevant, like drinking all her meals instead of partaking of some food. She she might be an anorexic for all we know, throwing up her food to stay thin. Cause Candy is a thick chick, okay? She got thick thighs and everything. But she trying to hold it down. She trying to make this thing work for her. But she knows it comes at a cost. Hollywood wants you to be slim, thin, 
and ready to throw out all kinds of trim. Okay, they selling sex. And anybody that could have taught her something about something as far as acting was Kim Fields. But she didn't like her. She saw her as a threat on the show. So, of course, what can it do? Black border. You know how them secret societies when they don't like somebody and they have to come to a consensus of unified truth and they put the white ball in there for acceptance, the black ball in there for um not accepted. So I used to hang out. I used to know. I used to be friends with some AKAs and some Deltas, okay? And they kind of pretty much told me how they got down with certain things, all right? And, you know, they start talking in code and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, okay, all right. I ain't with y'all. And when I had my college experience, I didn't want to pledge no mess like that. I ain't got time for somebody to tell me what to do. Only person that can do that permanently all the time, and it's going to be good in my book, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And anybody else can get it. Even my mama and my dad, if they coming out wrong, okay? But you know I'm going to do it respectfully because I don't want them to slap the shit out of me. Because I did get slapped the shit out of when I was 18. And I got a little fresh. And my mama was in hand distance. Woo, cha. Talking about traumatized. And it kind of jarred me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew after that time, if I'm talking some shit, it's going to be out of my mama's range, okay? Ear range as well. Because she had pretty good hearing. Hell, she still got pretty good hearing for an 80 year old. But anyway, moving back to what I was saying and trying to get to before we go into the Jasmine's brand, um, dot com. Um, before we get into her commentary, we put our spin on it. Because y'all remember Shamia? Yes. She didn't like Shamia either. Did y'all notice that? Shamia came on that show. I mean, she was kind of freaky with it. Freaky diggy with it. But the girl could sing. Candy didn't like that. See, Candy don't like nobody who comes out and over and shines her out and over. Okay? Remember? Portia. Portia was a uh, cute little person coming in now. Young, slim. Well, she had a healthy body, but it, like they say, the milk does the body good. She couldn't stand Portia, especially when Portia didn't want to do a little freaky deaky thing allegedly but then she turned that whole travesty into the dungeon affair y'all remember went on the road with it made plenty of coins but this was detrimental and it was defamation of her character and her business wow candy really wow but yeah you remember those scott sisters how did they can tear that flow up with that mic oh lord and then can i mean um What's her name over there? Tiny. She just was good for the show. But she could uh, do a little tweet tweet better than uh, Candy Birds. But Candy Birds didn't want to give them no shine. You know what I'm saying? They were trying to get back on. And on thing Candy was saw uh, the Scott sisters was trying to do was blow up on her. And she wasn't finna have that. Because we already know how Tiny gets down. It's always T.I.'s world. Okay. And like I said, look for T.I. to become a politician. And, and remember where you heard it from. Because he get down in them elite groups as well. And he trying to clean up his act. Yes, right. So he can be a politician. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. Okay. But anyway. Yeah, Karen don't want no Scott sisters coming on her platform trying to outshine her. She said, forget about escape. Y'all tried to have me as the doo-wop girl. Which, Candy, you really were a doo-wop girl. I don't know where you come with. Hell, Portia even sounded uh, better than you on her Flatline song. I don't know if you helped her with that or some other producers and writers got into it. But yeah, hell, even can't. I mean, uh, Portia uh, outshined you when it came to being on the mic. Okay? But yes, Nene and Candy had got into it a long time ago. Okay, about who was what. Y'all can't get mad because Nene just coined the idea and the saying, head bitch in charge, queen of Real Housewives of Atlanta. That was her claim to fame. Nobody else claimed it, so I ain't mad at Nene. Then y'all remember how Kim and Candy fell out? Mm-hmm. The children start hanging around each other. All that little bad stuff going on because of money, greed, and position. Okay? Money, greed, and position. And now she trying to get a spinoff. Uh, even though she had a few, the ski trip, uh, candy, and the marriage thing. But now she wants something for as longevity. And Mama Joyce wants her to be in the spotlight so she could continue to live the life that she forced ahead for candy to have on her back. Okay? But yes, candy wants that position that Kim Zosiak is holding. Y'all remember Kim, Kim Zosiak tarted with the party and the song that... 
uh, Candy had wrote out for her. Yes, and she turned that into a spinoff and used the song to Candy created for her. Now, ain't that a itch, okay? But yeah, she's all going over there and hear Candy spew her venom over there about trying to be nice, nasty with the fall of Nene Leakes. But like I said, Candy, <laughs> Karma is a female, okay? And she's catty as hell. And she will come back to your residence when it's time for you to get your just do. Bet you believe it. Because the only person that I knew could sew your ass up on live TV and behind doors was none other than tiny Tamika Carter Harris. Yes, she got you straight. Even when y'all had that little... A spinoff or a, I don't know if it was Broadway related or was it We Television. I don't know. And you a bad stepmom, Candy. You sit up there and give your biological daughter all this and then you can't get Kayla in there but you consider her your daughter. Girl, you ain't nothing but my foe else. Fake Full of foolery, fuckery, and you're fraudulent as hell. Okay, I know people don't like me to cuss, but I just had to get that out. Kakani trying to pull the wool off of some of these eyes. And y'all remember that uh, closet gate? Who y'all remember? It's the 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 uh the the main catalyst of going into that closet. That was Candy Burris, y'all. That scene didn't even really have to happen. But you see how the cards played that little Satan daughter of Satan and she went over there trying, I'm down here and I'm gonna go see your closet and then he had told her don't get in that closet girl then Portia come along cause her and Portia was kind of cool at the time and she didn't really really mean no harm cause you know you gotta give a little extra padding for when Portia Williams come into the scene and she wants to uh, do some crazy shit you know what I'm saying we gotta give her a look she the one that worried about the underground railroad that was not in uh, operation at the time when the housewives of atlanta was uh starting up you know we had to educate her a little bit which i don't know why we did but we had to okay i'm pretty sure she took a part of some black history lessons at school her um grandfather uh deceased jose williams was a true activist here in atlanta i don't know why she didn't do some things with him that we could go back and see uh but you could tell she was absent a lot of those times but we're just gonna really not float too much on portia because she is not the target of discussion tonight okay but anyway, yes, Candy didn't like Shamil. Shamil was a threat because she was a great singer. She out sung Candy on one of the particular episodes. She didn't like Yovana because Yovana was cute too. And, you know, it was more so like uh, Yovana was too close to Nene and getting shine uh, off of Nene and probably being a newcomer to the show. And Candy couldn't, she didn't like that. She she didn't like that somebody else was going to bring some thunder and she was going to be put on the bench like Cynthia is pretty much always on the bench. We know she didn't like Nene from past incidents, you know, from the beginning, from the inception, her and Nene kind of bumped heads. Uh, we know why she don't like Portia because Portia and uh, Phaedra were very good friends. But like I said, Candy, forget she sided up with Apollo and her husband. And women don't uh, take too kindly of that. Especially when they know secrets about you. You know secrets about them. And then you ain't going to choose Phaedra's side. Yeah. That's why Phaedra pretty much came for you and Portia at the same time. Portia was kind of collateral damage. Because Phaedra used her and her innocence of not really uh, understanding some big words here and there. And being seen as... Being a pawn. She didn't think Phaedra would do her like that. But hey. When you're thinking evil. You do evil. Okay. And then we know how she feels about Cynthia Bailey. She is not a friend of Cynthia Bailey. Even though Cynthia thinks she is. No. Candy is dogging you out on camera. In her confessionals. On the real Housewives of Atlanta Bravo. Confessional time. She's also dogging you out on her speak on it platform Cynthia she thinks you're dumb as rocks for trying to marry somebody who has effort effortlessly come on anybody's platform and say that he didn't give a shit about his his former two wives or any of the women in his life's past tense before meeting you and he's dropping off his book trying to make that a bestseller on the backs of your hard work 
at Real Housewives of Atlanta. Yes, he has come over and he's using your platform real well. Okay, and Candy is pretty much shading that, but you don't get the recipe. You didn't. You just ate of the uh, item she was serving up to you, which was f uh, full of shit, and you ate it real well. Okay. And we know she don't like Marlo. Not really. Mm -mm, no. Because she um, know Marlo has a past. And she pretty much want to get some of that dirt. So we could talk about that and get off her mess with Todd. And Todd uh, ciphering up. Or I should say uh, leaking out her bank account. In short but steady withdrawals okay we know she don't like kim because kim gooped her from the beginning with uh making her or uh i wouldn't say making her but convincing her to work with her you know playing the innocent victim until she got with candy uh what she could get out of candy which which was a hit song um uh, her connections in the music industry and um taking the title of that song and using it for a spinoff show which have been very lucrative for um kim for a very long time and of course candy's looking for that to be the same um situation she can get herself into if she can only get andy cohen to play ball but of course andy cohen is looking out for himself and if it's not going to make sense for longevity, Candy, it doesn't matter. Look how he's doing Nene. He pumped her head up so high and Nene fell for the okie doke. Okay, she really thought that she would run this show uh, until it wasn't going to run no more. And she was going to continue to make uh five million maybe on the show she was getting to or maybe six or seven eight nine ten million i don't know how nini could have been so naive to think a show like this would go on forever okay and she not be uh putting her monies down in more lucrative deals other than clothing shops okay that kind of shows me that nini is not such a good businesswoman and she should have stayed with that italian man who could have probably showed her how to run things and how to acquire wealth uh and the stock exchange and many other uh, lucrative business deals that she didn't have to put over that much money i'm not talking about ponzi schemes or any of that but sometimes you got to hang with some rich folks to understand how the trump mentality can make you a very rich woman and then go bankrupt if you have to because <laughs> how many times have our president currently has stated he went bankrupt and still won't even show his taxes okay i'm just saying when you're moving like that then you're moving but when you're moving in this reality realm where it's here today gone tomorrow but you banked all of your assets on the show yeah yeah it's kind of bad and candace really trying to solidify herself late in life into the um what you call it the acting world even though her claim to fame is only acting in high school and in the drama club and this that and third but sometimes candy for people like yourself you needed more formal education you needed to experience a lot more uh in the field of acting than what you think it is okay or you're gonna become a one-hit wonder because i did catch you in a christmas special uh, when you called yourself acting as a friend coming to visit another friend out of town and your whole setup was just to give her advice and for her to look for love but you flatlined in that i didn't saw i didn't see anything really like you had the it factor same thing with kenya moore people want to say she was a well-known actress this that no kenya had cameo shots okay and the parts that they had her play were not really good ones they're just like prostitution type of uh what do you call it shots they were giving her like one part she played on martin and she's supposed to be this dingy dense type of woman that had a sharp mouth and tongue by herself but the only thing that she was selling to the camera was a body okay a body you know she was wearing trashy clothes and you know kind of like prostitution clothes and it, it fit her felt 
but it fitted her body very well. But the whole tonation of her character was one of a prostitute type of low desperate, uh, only care about her body and her looks, vanity type of woman. Okay, and then she rolled around with Jay-Z and was in a lot of his music videos. You know, she was a, a, a video thought type of person. Um, you know, pretty much not flattering roles. So, and then we got her here when she's on Real Housewives of Atlanta. <coughs> I don't know if y'all really remember when she first came on the scene. She's supposed to be dating a lot of Africans and uh, ciphering them for money and position. Excuse me. She even got a Rolls Royce out of one of them. I don't really know what happened to that. And she was renting houses when she said she was buying houses. And as we do know, it took her a while for her her and uh, what's her name? To Ray Whitfield to finish more Manor as well as uh, the Chateau of Sheree. Okay, they both were competing, and of course, Kenya was talking more shit than anybody else in a fighting ring would talk, okay, before they go into battle, but it just is what it is, so I gave y'all that background story of how I saw Candy and how Candy don't like nobody but herself and her man that she's trying to keep by her, even she had uh before his demise or he got shot or something at a nightclub the one that mama joyce really didn't like i think candy was calling herself taking care of but four or five six of his kids and mama joyce really had a problem with that a real big problem but candy didn't have no problem no she didn't she wanted who she wanted she thought she was buying him but i think he was more so pimping her out stop elijah but um that's just how it goes sometimes that's just how it is sometimes mama choice if we got further into your uh what do you call it past i don't think we would come up with anything too kosher either because like i say everybody has a past i have a past you have a past family we all have past but you know if we smart enough not to put our stuff on tv okay for everybody to partake of or try to go research us but you know you still have people that try to do that but i ain't got nothing you know what i'm saying i just I, i'm a hard working woman uh doing this on the side and so, don't try to come from Deb. Because Deb, you, you going to you, try, please. I, I'm a hard-working woman. That's all I can say. I ain't got no wealth of no kind. All right? Because if I did, I wouldn't be working my full-time job. And I wouldn't be on YouTube. But since YouTube has a platform and you get paid and stuff, if your videos are good enough and people like them, this and that and third... You can make a modest living, but I am nowhere on that scale. How they say I'm at the cooler taste. I am not at the beer taste nor the champagne wine, okay? I'm at the cooler section, all right? And I'm enjoying myself. Yes, I am with my family because it's a family affair over here. And like I said, some people want to make this their job. And when they make this solely their job, they have to do a lot of more marketing because just trying to get a check from YouTube, that's like the start of things. But you want to market yourself. You want to have uh, marketing ideas. You want to have merchandise. You want to be sponsors or you want to be sponsored by somebody like Maybelline Products if you were to get that high. People of that type of authority because they definitely market real well and we know Maybe it's Maybelline or maybe it's her. Okay, you know that kind of stuff? That sticks in your mind, those little jingles they use for their marketing campaigns, for their products. See, that's what Karen and Nene need to be. But see, they peddling their stuff. And they doing low marketing on Instagram and Facebook. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't hit the social media platforms. But we need to see your behind and your products, Kenya Moore. Uh, who's more current with her products out there. With her hair products. We need to see you advertising on TV. On the radio. Big stuff. You know how they say big things popping, little things stopping. That's what we need to see you all doing. But as we can see, because you won't leave, you won't go nowhere. You just got to wait till Bravo kick you out. Uh, you, this is your bread and butter. So you can't fool the people that know. 
Okay, you can fool the people that want to hype you up and they say they ride or die for you and this, that, and the third. But in reality, no, not so much. Okay, not so much because you wouldn't spend all your time here trying to bark up Bravo Entertainment TV. Okay, for your show time. All right, but let's get on now. I don't tear it a little bit too longer than what I wanted to. I want to share with you all Jasmine Brand, the Jasmine Brand, uh, her journalist for her particular article that is being sponsored on her platform. It was written by Mayate Miata Shane Miata. Shanae was the journalist for this particular article she titled as Candy Burris reacts to NeNe Leaks being noticeably absent on Real Housewives of Atlanta. All I can tell you is we didn't understand. Candy throwing so much shade out there and I'm hoping she's waiting for when the weather turns and it goes in her direction. She can remember these same things she's trying to dish out on her nemesis NeNe Leaks. Okay. The article goes in to say, what what's Real Housewives of Atlanta without the head peach in charge? Fans and fellow housewives alike have noticed that NeNe Leakes has been noticeably absent in many of these seasons' episodes of the hit Bravo reality show. She acknowledged that at the beginning of the season when she didn't appear until the third episode, NeNe Leakes posted this hilarious caption on Instagram in November of last year. She said, now that the pre-show has ended, the real premiere starts. Sunday at 8 p.m. on Bravo TV. Okay. And it's another uh, video clip that you can go into. But we all saw it. Who, have, who all have been watching the show uh, for season 12 from the beginning. Okay. And we have some fans that agree. Uh, well, it states she also agreed with these fans' comments that production is edging her off the show. Okay. Um, Mike. Uh, uh, Mikey BBYX said they're definitely icing you off the show slowly but surely no matter what you'll always be the HBIC and she um, had said okay and our Carter B voice uh, then he responded back to him on her platform but we're not going to go into all of those different things we're going to get back to the article where it goes and says even Real Housewives of Platonic star Monique Samuels is in disbelief at Nene's lack of visibility this season. AOL Entertainment Managing Editor Gibson Johns posts this question on Twitter. Serious question. Has there ever been a full-time housewife who has been featured less during a season than Nene Leakes has been on The Real Housewives of Atlanta? It's becoming absurd how many full episodes she's missing from entire entirely okay then monique replied it's getting beyond ridiculous okay i don't see what the ridiculous part it is it's showtime uh and it's not at the apollo okay it's how entertainment gets down you with it you're the uh head bic one day and then you're crumbling crunk uh, crumbling at somebody's ankles to stay afloat. Okay, begging them to keep you on the show, even if you have to do some things like retaliation and seek litigation, which is that seems like what Nene is involving herself in. And I don't see a win win situation with that because I don't see how uh, you could try to sue your employer and thinking you're going to come out smelling like a rose okay it just don't happen it only happen in the real world okay even if you definitely do have some founded type of uh validity to whatever you're stating against whoever you're trying to seek lit litigation from you know at the end of the day yes they may settle with you they may give you a nice check but you won't be a part of them and pretty pretty more than likely you're going to be blackballed so hopefully whatever you're trying to sum up Make it work to retirement, okay? And make sure you're paying your taxes so you can get that Social Security benefit as well, Nene. All right, just a little helpful hint from my mind to yours, okay? But then we go to where Candy Burris is being featured uh, in this Jasmine Brand article where it says, fellow peach holder, Candy Burris addressed Nene's absence on her YouTube after show. Speak on it, okay, in her voice. It goes to say what I will say, and I hate to keep bringing this up, sidebar, real quickly. No, you don't, Candy. You love bringing up 
bad news on somebody else. That's what you do. Because if you cared enough, you wouldn't speak on it. Okay? I'm just saying. But going back to the article, it says, Because I know some of you are going to notice that Nene was not in another episode. Yes, a blind man could see that, Candy. A blind man or woman could see that. We didn't need your edification to highlight. Put the spotlight on that issue for us. We knew it without you even saying anything. That's my sidebar going back. To the article it said what is going on bravo truly original what is going on why is the og not on an episode again i don't know i mean clearly we don't know each other business when it comes to contracts now like i could say on anybody's job you know when people don't hit some shitty times you know when people are going to be getting in trouble only thing you have to see is them marching up to hr or you know streets talk and in the uh, work world work related stuff talks so we gonna believe that you didn't hear this was coming up on miss nene leaks or mrs nene leaks cannon go sit your ass down somewhere we are not the ones that fell off the turner truck yesterday okay we are fully bred it we are fully knowledgeable and we know what shit smells like okay and you are fucking up the place wholeheartedly not in this article but just as my sidebar y'all Okay, going back to the article, it says, I don't know what she signed for. I don't know how many episodes she's supposed to be in. Sidebar again. Candy, why are you trying to get up all in any business? Is she uh, marching at your door trying to figure it out? Is she trying to figure out how many episodes you're signed up for? Is she trying to figure out how much money you're making? Girl, she only worried about herself and how she could stay top dog biller on the show. Okay. But like I said, Nene have burnt bridges. She's been out here acting her ass in public, not wanting to greet her public. Uh, viewers of the show that say they, they like her, they follow her, they believe in her, they want prosperous things to come her way. No, she going around here slapping out phones out of people's uh, hands. She ain't acknowledging people that's coming up trying to get a little selfie or autograph or something type. No, she been acting fool, foolish, fuckery, fake, and fraudulent out there in them streets in Atlanta. And the shit is coming back home to her hen house and she's dealing with aftermath just keeping it real people you can't be on tv calling yourself a superstar or reality star and don't think you can't you have you don't have to answer to your subjects or how you looking down like you too big on your chariot you can't come down and greet the people in the street even queen elizabeth over there had to get in her little uh I was going to say train ride, but it's a chariot, a little horse and buggy, pull it along thing. Or oh, hell, she might be driving a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Cargo car, honey, I don't know. But the queen, she got down way to her subject side. Yes, she do. And the peasants in the streets. I and mean, then y'all know why you didn't think you had to not come off your horse and be cordial to your fans here and there. It's called marketing yourself and being likable see that's why you in the shit that you're in now okay but anyway moving back uh to the article that was my sidebar uh candy goes on to continue to say i don't know how much they paying her i don't know any of that so maybe this is something they have already understood going into the season all uh, i can tell you is we didn't understand who is we candy because ne- technically you need to be talking about yourself you don't need to be having or forging friendships on uh the demise of nene leaks okay speak for yourself individually is what we want to hear from you not collectively but anyway going back to the article it says um she's saying we don't understand i don't know if any of the other girls knew that nini wasn't going to be on a lot of episodes this year interestingly well she's definitely in next week's episode like candy trying to throw us a little bone okay i'm like girl we know you and deemed you the bone collector you're not doing a very good job uh with that situation uh you have to have some type of tenacity and you fail miserably. Maybe you need to take some notes from Miss Marlowe Hampton on how to dish the dirt and stand in your shit. Okay, but we know you can't do that. We know you're a background singer. Uh, we know you can't act. 
you're a great writer, they say. Uh, maybe you need to go back to producing and writing and things of that nature because you're feeling miserable and all the other attributes that you call yourself uh, being glorified in. Uh, and I'm just speaking from what I see, not that I, I've heard. Whenever you grace my screen and I feel like I want to particularly uh, see what you're saying, it always come up with a lot of foolery, fakery, fuck shit. Okay, Candy? And you're very fraudulent at that. All right. And then she ends her article by saying, do you miss Nene Leaks on Real Housewives of Atlanta? Let us know in the comments. Now, I can't say yes. I miss Nene Leaks. Not all the drama negatively she brings that she don't necessarily have to bring. But, you know, I've been to her car last year as the HBIC. But, you know, for them just cutting her out scenes that they definitely had, uh, uh, film with her I think it's a little bargaining tool they're showing her that you don't own us we own you uh, type of mentality that Bravo is playing with her but again Nene signed up for this and she got too greedy and then she tried to bite the hand that fed her so when you got a big machine operating to your little machine that you thought you had all of that shit becomes obsolete and you become one of an afterthought to them and they don't move on to who they gonna replace you with even if they have to start cutting salaries to bring in uh several more uh people to fill your one slot nini i'm just saying but in conclusion let's go on and hear what candy birds had to say we got a little audio clip of her shadiness that she's throwing uh wholeheartedly at nini but like i said when you sit and, and plot somebody else's demise how they say when you dig one grave, you better dig one for yourself also because you may not to be the intended target that you're striving for you might be the intended target that's issuing out uh, the salaciousness of somebody else's demise, Candy. Remember that, baby girl. Hold on. That Nene was not in another episode. One more time, let me say that correctly. That Nene was not in yet another episode. What is going on? Bravo! Truly original. What is going on? What is the... Wait, wait. Okay, and that was it, guys. You see what I'm saying? Candy is just foaming at the mouth of joy that Nene is not in the episode. Uh, previous as well as not being featured on season 12 too much anyway. But like I say, Nene might win out. She might be setting a president of a president's of uh, forming uh, a particular type of litigation where it can help women uh coming after her to feel like they're being sized out or iced out of a platform that they help build so you never know you never know how it's going to turn out uh i don't wish nobody's demise on anything that they're trying to really do uh especially if they've done it the right way they're not actually tearing people down so they can step over them and get a little bit more i think it's a lot uh, of uh, spaces out there for people to do what they need to do without trying to damage somebody else's uh, platform or their ideas of solidifying themselves in whatever parts they feel they want to play in the entertainment industry, whether it's in film, whether it's in music, or however you see it. Because um, I think that's it, right? Filming, acting. And singing yeah that type of industry uh, especially when you don't have post-secondary education to put yourself in another position where you could say well I don't have to stay in uh, 
this type of industry i can go back to you know some type of other professional industry that's looked upon and deemed upon as helping humanity type of situations whatever career field that you chose to go into hell candy can go and try to build a lucrative production company where she's bringing out artists but I mean, evidently there's no money in it because a lot of people aren't doing it. So maybe they still have to fight with the big machine uh, in order to get some playing time for their artists. So, but, you know, like I said, Candace is full of shit. She really is. I did like her at the beginning because I saw her as a starving artist. Someone wanted to come in, make her mark, and move on. But she's just looking for people's demise uh in their careers like i said kim fields could have helped her in the acting career but she didn't like kim fields being on the show talking about she wasn't the right fit hell you wasn't the right fit to me can and i would have saw uh tiny birds i mean damn tiny birds tiny uh harris up there doing the darn thing and she would have gave a lot more to see what ti's life was really about you know what i'm saying we could see more facets of her than what we can see with you bringing in the storylines from the uh, OLG gang, your aunts and your mother, as well as your uh, opportunist husband. Okay, girl. Oh, and you tell me you want to spin off. What are we going to look at? Because Mama Joyce is going to take the scene. Then you need to be paying her more money. Okay, for making uh, digs at your husband. Okay, that's not going to be your husband for long if you keep playing him in a storyline that where he keeps seeing as deemed as the opportunist and want to take all your money and you being played as the victim no that don't work candid that don't work at all my girl but that's all i had for the video fam y'all get down and tell me tell me what you thought about it can it be in fake once again once again or do y'all agree with can is doing and her motives and what she's doing and how she's throwing salt in an open wound uh meaning nini uh is the bad barrier of bad news happening to her and her livelihood is going up to shitsville and Candy don't think hers can be put in that same platform. She thinks she's obsolete. She thinks she's irreplaceable. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what she's looking at. Because, hey, the writing's on the wall with Nene Leaks and, and trying to assert herself. It could, it could definitely happen to you, Kenya, Cynthia, Eva, Marlo, Tanya. Well, I don't think Tanya care too uh, much because she does have uh, a professionalism and a profession outside of this Real Housewives of Atlanta's uh, opportunity that you all have forged with uh, Bravo Entertainment. But, you know, again, Candy, what do you have? What do you have claim to fame other than your little products you're peddling on social media? Uh, if you didn't have uh, this big paycheck with this big platform, uh, I think you would still be sitting in your old house uh, that had been renovated and you still uh making peanuts on the dollar and trying to be seen so candy um yeah don't bite the hand that feeds you and don't look to laugh at somebody else's uh demise that it seems like they're in a demise type situation but it may turn up to be roses for nene leaks in the end we never know we never know but that's all i had fam get down in the comments and let me know what y'all thought about it okay and don't forget to definitely subscribe to our channel share and like our videos guys and i will see you next video good night